So if I have created some lamination pieces that are a little bit too short to safely pass over the joiner, or if they happen to just be a tight enough bend that I can't really pass it over the joiner uh, so that the knife is cutting per uh, perpendicular to the grain, I can also repurpose my mold as a jig to support my piece and cut it on either the table saw if it's short enough or on the bandsaw. Uh, so I have here my, my two, two vase pieces here uh, and my vacuum mold, which I have repurposed as a cutting jig. Uh, and I can either manually just hold my piece in place and run it through the bandsaw, or if I'm worried about my hand slipping, I can add just a little bit of uh, security with a couple pieces of double stick tape. And just make sure that that piece has come down nice and flush with the surface of the mold. And that way, even if I've bent my lamination and the entire lamination became skewed and it's no longer parallel with the surface of the, or with the sides of the mold, with your ribs of the mold, uh, as this one did, it's about um, probably half an inch out of parallel altogether. Now it doesn't matter anymore because I'm using my mold surface as a reference uh, and the squareness of the edge on my mold to run against this fence. So I've checked to make sure that the bearings on the bandsaw completely clear the height of my mold. I might check to make sure that they clear it with my lamination on top as well. I've checked to make sure that I can run my piece securely against the fence all the way through the lamination or all the way through the cut without uh, getting my fingers anywhere near the blade. Uh, and now I should be ready to make my cut. Okay, so as you could see, uh, I've made an off cut on my mold here. Uh, the double stick tape held my lamination securely in place, so all I had to concentrate on was just pushing my mold into the fence the entire time. And the piece wasn't actually as crooked as I thought it was. It was probably more like a quarter inch off parallel. Uh, but now I know for sure I have a straight square edge here that is perpendicular to the surface of my curve. So all I have to do now is flip my hand plane upside down in a vise and just smooth out this edge here. And then for the parallel edge, I can either scribe with my marking gauge um, and cut it with a hand tool. I can come back to the bandsaw and use a stop that I place on my mold, maybe at a bendy ply to cut that parallel edge. Um, or I can even just run my piece against the bandsaw fence, I'm just more likely to have tear out where the S curve doesn't meet the machine bed, so it's not supported at the moment that it's being cut. So most likely I will just come back to the bandsaw and set up a stop on the surface of my mold. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that I cut a square edge on all of my pieces first uh, so that my stop has something to reference off of. So we've adjust, addressed a variety of ways to create that initial square flat edge. Uh, and this way is going to be the most labor intensive, but it will also pretty much cover everything that's not physically possible to cut off your mold or to cut on the joiner um, or even just hand planing. Uh, and this is using your mold. You don't necessarily have to use your mold. Uh, to hold your piece upright on its edge. Uh, and then I've kind of, I've attached these two little MDF feet on either side of my router so that I straddle over the edge of my lamination. Uh, if you wanted to be a little bit more legitimate with this, you could actually have two long rails running along either side of the lamination and then the router running on a separate set of rails uh, that go crosswise to the initial rails. So you're sort of creating a rudimentary CNC. Uh, so this is even more low tech than the rudimentary CNC with rails, because uh, this is just two little MDF feet 
Uh, and then I'm using my mold to support and hold my lamination in place. I have bumped my lamination about an eighth of an inch above the surface of the mold so I can take an even cut here. Uh, and I've already run my router along the lamination to make sure I'm not hitting any snags, I'm not hitting any clamps, uh, I'm not bumping up against anything I don't want to bump up against, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so now I should be able to set the depth of my cut and start taking some passes. Um, and because I am treating my router bit as essentially an end mill, uh, you do want to make sure that you have a router bit that does cut on the end, not just on the side. Uh, and you also don't have to worry quite as much about cut direction because the bit is engaging in both sides simultaneously. Uh, you really only have to worry about cut direction when you're cutting on the side of a bit. Okay, so using my sort of pseudo low-tech CNC setup, I was able to get a really nice clean edge with just a single pass out of a half inch bit on my plunge router. Um, and every single time my little MDF feet accidentally bumped into something, I would just sort of like readjust, make sure that I was actually perpendicular to the curve at that point. Uh, if you want to not have to deal with the MDF feet bumping into things. Like I said, you could create a rail system on either side of your laminations that your router could then ride on those rails instead. Um, but this is a really great technique if, say, your lamination is too big and cumbersome to safely run over the joiner or your lamination bends too dramatically to run that well over the joiner. Uh, anything where the joiner starts to cram become much more of a safety hazard than it's worth. Uh, this takes a little bit more extra time to set up, but you saw once I did finally get this set up, I didn't have to do, make too many adjustments, uh, and I was able to make a nice clean edge and a single pass with the router. So now I can flip this over uh, and mill the other edge. Uh, I could send it through the planer, I could cut it on the bandsaw. Uh, there's a number of different ways to create that parallel edge 